You know, the two-column proof has been around forever, and, and every single geometry student uses it. In fact, I remember using it, and I loved it when I was a kid, too. The reality is that when and if you become a real, mathematician's proving new, real mathematician proving new theorems that actually no one's ever considered before, we don't use a two-column proof. We actually write narrative, like we write you know, in English and in social studies. We actually write in paragraphs with sentences and putting all the ideas together. And, and I thought it'd be sort of fun to actually see how you can take that kind of narrative the kind that real mathematicians use, and convert it to a, a standard two-column proof that you and I are used to. So, so here's the result that I want us to take a look at. And then I'm going to show you a paragraph proof. And then we're going to convert that into a traditional two-column proof. So let's take a look. We're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So let's take a look at this picture right here. I see that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. OK, so that's what we're given. And now I'm supposed to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Well, I know these two are congruent. I want to show these two are congruent. And you know what? I think this is going to be OK. Here's my thinking. Let me just share it with you. These are vertical angles. So this angle is congruent to this angle. Well, these are vertical angles. So this angle is congruent to this angle. Well, I know that these are congruent. So therefore, by some kind of transitivity or substitution, I should be able to conclude that these are, are equivalent as well, are congruent as well. So let's see if we can sort of make that a go. And so here is a paragraph proof that someone else, it was not me, someone else created. Let's see what we think about it. So here's a paragraph proof. Notice what makes the paragraph proof is there's no, there's no two columns. There's no, there's no statements and reasons. But it's all sort of combined into, uh, into prose. So by the vertical angles theorem, ah, vertical angles, you see, I saw that coming. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Yeah, they're vertical angles. And angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Yep, they're vertical angles as well. So by the vertical angle theorem, we know this is true. Um, it is given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So we're given this. See how it's written like that? We're given that. So uh, by the transitive property of congruence, and we predicted that too, we see that angle 3 is congruent to angle 2. Why is that? Well, because we know that 1 is congruent to 2, and we know that 1 is congruent to 3, and so therefore 2 must be congruent to 3, and thus 2 is congruent to 4. And why is that? Well, I have that 3 is congruent to 2, I know that 3 is congruent to 4, therefore these two must be congruent to each other. And that's what we're trying to prove. All right, let's see if we can now take this nice narrative, and this is, like I said, how real mathematicians prove real theorems, and see if we can convert it to a, a somewhat more systematic approach that we've been using, which are the, um, the two-column proofs. So statement and reason, here we go. So first of all, I'm going to start with the given. So the given is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And that's the given. Now, what's the next thing I want to use? Well, the next thing I want to use is the fact that these people are, um, are vertical angles. So therefore, they're congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And why is this true? By the vertical angles theorem. And that's what was captured here in this sentence. And now what I want to do is use the transitive property to conclude that angle 3 must be congruent to angle 2. Why is that? Well, I know that 1 is congruent to 3. I know that 1 is congruent to 2. So therefore, these two must be congruent. And that's by the transitive property. And then, uh, again, using the transitive property, I see since angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 2, then 4 and 2 must be congruent. So 2 is congruent to angle 4, and that's why the exact same reason. By the way, let me just say one little word here. I don't want you to pick up any bad habits. When I used to write these up, and if I still write them up today for real, I'd write this very, very neatly, just like it's there, and I'd have everything written out nice and clearly here. I would never use this even kind of quote thing. But I'm just doing it for you right now live, and so I just don't want to waste a lot of time writing stuff out. But when you do it for real, you want it to be neat, you want it to be clear, you want it to be well written out. Anyway, you can see how we went from a paragraph proof to our more traditional two-column proof. The bottom line is, if you keep doing math long enough, you're going to emigrate from this and move to this. Cool.